cannot be stopped, according to Moni, is the machine. We'll find out if our machine needs a reboot or if it's right. Coming up here with round number seven with Marshall and Paul with the call. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, machine. Yeah, <laughs> no more Monty, <laughs> just machine. We got Neon Cheon over here, Monty the machine. I need a, I need a sweet nickname. <laughs> you guys have. I can't remember the last time I used that one. But <laughs> yeah, that, that was, that's his old school nickname. We're all just part of the Chiantourage sure. at the end of the day. Oh, my goodness. Marshall Cycliffe here with Paul Chiana, and we've got another round of standard to bring you. We've got a couple more to go before we wrap things up uh, for day number one. Remember, we're playing a big three-day event here tomorrow. We're going to be running back basically the same stuff that we did today. And then, of course, Sunday is reserved for top eight only in the feature match area, though. Check this out. Two undefeated players, Shoti Asoka and Jim Davis, having their way with the field thus far and two very different approaches to standard, Paul. We see Rakdos Breach for Jim Davis, which is one of the many versions of the Rakdos shell that we see out in the field today. But Esper Legends is a deck that is far less pop popular than that Rakdos shell, and that's what Shota brought to the table. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this is, if you look at Jim's deck, it still kind of have the, has that classic Rakdos shell. Right, so any matchup's going to be relatively close. But I will say for this particular matchup, I think their team perhaps trimmed on a few interactive elements just so that they can be better against mid-range. And I think that's going to give the, give up some percentage points in this specific matchup, right? Okay. They're playing cards like Main Deck Duress, which has very few targets. And they're playing maybe one or two less removal spells as well. And all of those add up. It's interesting because Shota's deck is mostly a curve out creature deck. Right. It's hard to, you know, when you see the cards that it plays, you, your mind doesn't usually go to comparing it to say something like, you know, a mono white aggro deck or a mono red aggro deck or something, but it actually shares more in common with those decks and the way that it operates than it does with a lot of the multicolored decks that we see out here. The difference is that its mana is made possible here by, well, you can see some of what's going on, and you get these amazing, I mean, look at that, Rafine Scheming Seer, and that had to be answered. That has to be answered very quickly or the game snowballs out of control. Yeah, and absolutely. And Jim on the play this game, which is, of course, huge. And uh, looks like he has multiple copies of a cut down for the Rafine. So this is exactly the type of hand that you're looking for in this matchup. Shota, um, you know, playing a curve, a two drop into three drop here. But, I mean, Jim, 16. first one to land that shield. Does Shota have an answer? It looks like he does. Needs it. Needs it. There's that upkeep. Go for the throw. Has a land and also can play a Rona. So this is big. Churning through his library with Rafine, with, with Rafine as well. Easy for me to say. And uh, you can see another copy of Rona is actually going to hit the graveyard and you here. You know, I, so Jim with, with a really aggressive line. But if you look at his hand, he's got a cut down in his hand. Can't use it anymore. Oh, no. Can't use it anymore Rafine's on this Rafine. <gasps> and I wonder if tough. that's going to cost him. Especially now that Thalia, Guardian of Thraven's on the battlefield, putting an extra tax on anything that Jim wants to do. The alternative line that turn could have been kill your Rafine and then draw a card with the Bank Buster, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of playing it a little bit slower. And in this case, it's going to be cut down on the only target that he can do, but it's a nice two spell turn here for Davis as he plays Fable. I think that's the first time that we haven't seen a killable Rafine killed immediately. Right. Today. Yeah. I mean, D Davis just kind of wanted to put maximum pressure there, right, with the Shieldred. Speaking of. And now we have a Shieldred on the other side, and Davis has zero removal spells for either creatures that are in play. This game's going to be over very quickly if that's the case. But we do have Fable going to Chapter 2. Potentially, Jim can go up to seven mana. And if he does rummage and find... One of those heavy hitters that he's playing, right? That can get him right back into the game. This is the point of the game that we're at now. He needs a big, big hit. Itali, some removal spells, needs to find it. However, every card that gets rummage, that's an extra two damage that Jim is going to be taking here. Jim could have also just been thinking, you know, Shota has to dedicate a lot of his slots to his powerful legends, and he doesn't always have removal spells at the ready for a card like Shielder, right? Yeah, but, but w one other thing for this particular matchup, mm -hmm. it's really important to just try to keep your opponent's side of the board 
is particularly if they're playing Legends, as clear as possible. Because the more permanents that they have in play, all of a sudden you also turn on their Legendary Lands. Ah. And one of the key, and, and part of why this deck is so powerful, aside from the fact that you're playing the best card in every part of the mana curve, is just the fact that when you have multiple Legends in play, all of a sudden, when you can when you can channel Odawara for one mana, right. right? All of a sudden, it feels like you're almost playing a different game. That makes a lot of sense. Rather than trying to pick a fight and race, even if you have a Shieldred on your side. And as we see the downside, if it does get killed, it can really collapse. That's what's happened here. Although both players now have Shieldred. And Jim's even going to take advantage of said Shieldred here. Right. <laughs> Shieldred's on both sides, so of course it's a wash. Yep, trigger, trigger. <laughs> Shota says, don't worry. I'm going to make you do it every time. <laughs> oh, they're having fun. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> These type of interactions you get with paper, you know, when you're sitting across from yeah. the other person. Big card here um, for Shota here. One of the two copies of Make This Appear that he has in his main. Oh. So that could stop one of those haymakers that you were talking about. Exactly. Wow. So now, I mean, he's got the he's got the Rafine in play here, right? As just a way to kind of put pressure on Jim while also having a counter for one of those potential seven drops that Jim is looking for. Uh oh, Shota's doing math. <laughs> Not where you want to be if you're Jim Davis. He's probably thinking, yeah. can I kill you next turn? I mean, imagine if Sh uh, Shota was able to find an Odawara here. Doesn't look like he has it. He's, yeah, he's got an AO, the Dawn Sky, which he's certainly considering here. Yeah, it's five spells. So wow. that's, uh, that's a stacked hand. At least two counters are going to be going onto that Rafine. Perhaps just seeing how many of these spells he can keep active. It does look like he wants to keep the Skrelv. Yeah, I mean, I imagine Shoda's going to want to be able to keep up, make this appear, and still try to put something in play. He put Denik into the uh, graveyard there. Right. And we do see Shildred's a trade here with Shieldred. Sure. Yeah. That's why it has Death Touch, right? Just oh, so they can trade. and look at this. He is just going for AO the Dawn Sky. Wow. It's a win in the air. It is a win in the air. In fact, they both are. And Jim Davis can't play. You know, has has you know, needs to just find removal spells and. Uh, I mean, will Natali get it done? I probably not. Right, unless I would you guess no. unless you somehow hit double go for the throat. Yeah, two removal. Like now, it's two lethal air threats here for Shota. But the Rafine has Ward One. Right. So don't even have the mana there necessarily. Right. Invoke Despair doesn't get it done. Not quite. Not on its own. Yeah, this is tough. And I mean, this Rafine There's is invoke. what's going to win show to this game. And AO the Dawn Sky is a nice one to sacrifice, too. You right. Get your choice of triggered abilities on death here. Yeah. Shota's going to take advantage of the first triggered ability rather than the plus right. one, plus one counters. Try to get some extra permanence into play here. Let's see if he finds anything. I mean, they so usually do. There's a Raven Man, a Rafine, and a second, and another Raven Man. So not the best. I think he's only going to be able to put a Raven Man into play. Okay, we can do that. And Shota's list is really skewed to a metagame that expects a lot of Rakdos and Grixis midrange. Okay. Not as much for the mirror. You have multiple copies of Raven Man. There are lists that play zero. Right, mm -hmm. but in this matchup, every permanent you have in play matters. Right, so there's multiple copies of Raven Man and also one main deck copy of the Transmogrant, along with some counters. So, a couple of small adjustments, but right. meaningful ones right. in this meta game. All right, well, what's the big finish here for Davis? C go for the throat. Oh, oh, he did find go for the throat. That's pretty nice. He had the extra mana available to pay as well. Holy oh smokes, Jim goodness. actually did manage to stabilize this board. I don't know All if you right. caught him, but he even kind of went, oh, okay. that Okay, <laughs> that was not bad. With off the Invoke Despair? Yeah. Incredible. Oh, my goodness. Okay. 
Does Shota have anything nice to do here, or is he just going to activate Raven Man to make a 1-1 one -one flyer and keep up Make Disappear? Oh, there's a, there's a Transmogrant in the yard, by the way. And, okay. But Jim Davis has three non-basics in play, so you do not get the discount just yet. You oh. need four. That is, again, one advantage to playing Rakdos over something like Grixis. But that's a flyer. He's put Denik. Two codes, right? He's jamming with the... It's like, hey, you want to trade here? Man. I am happy with this trade. And if this trades, Shota will also get a clue. Hence the, the pre-combat Denik. Right. Oh, and Jim says, yep. you got me. Yep. Fine. Yep. Yep. Stupid yep. Raven man. And are we going to run out of Skrell here as well? Slightly less mana efficient, but uh, okay. okay. He's going to pass turn. Oh, he's got the Make Disappear, of course. Right, of yeah. course. Shota is very close. Jim's on some lands here. Does have a draw here with the Bank Buster. Not dead just yet. And Denik's not lethal on its own. Right, right? that's three in the that's air. Three? That'll get Jim down to one. <laughs> Oof. Yikes. Shieldred, removal spell to get him back in. All right, so Jim's got a good amount of mana here. Seven, it looks like. Fable. Basic land. Okay, that Trespasser. gains you a life. That does gain you a life. Jim wow. is now up to five. Plenty of targets. Getting the Transmogrant is big, too, right? Jeez, Jim's, it's like so close, <laughs> but he's just staying ahead here. Right. But regardless, I mean, Jim is still on a two-turn clock here, right? But Shota's at six. Going to draw a card off of his clue. Okay, if you can find the Rafine, maybe, to put a counter on this. Iganjo is a big draw. Iganjo is a very big draw because, remember, Shota's at six. Jim is close to killing Shota as well. Yeah, Shota does have to, of course, keep an eye on his own life total. And currently, he's only working with a two-turn clock on Jim. There's also a day-night situation here with the Trespasser. What, a, what else did Shota have in hand? Was it just Iganjo Castle? I think he has the so Skrelf too, right? Oh, cut down too. Okay. Oh, boy. So that's going to be enough because remember, Skrelf can't block. Right. Right. So we're looking at a potential attack from four from the Bankbuster, three from the Trespasser, two from the Token, and of course you also get a drain for one, right? So if it's just Iganjo Castle, that wouldn't have been enough. But given that Shota also has the cut down, Jim still needs to find something. He can kill two threats. And prob <laughs> probably want to play the Skrelv here just so the Trespasser doesn't flip, right? Because that gives you two targets. Right. But his two removal spells are instant speed. So he can just pass back with his three cards in the hand. This is Ooh, really big close. draw step here. Jim knows it, too. Look at that. He surveys the yeah. scene, takes a look at what he draws. He's only got two lands in hand and at not this point. Not flipping was so big, too, because if that Trespasser Chandra flips... Chandra hopes Beacon off the top, Paul. Remember, Shota can make this appear for four with that Skrelv in play. Oh, right? you're right. So uh, does Jim Davis have access to ten mana? He has three, six, ten. ten. He has ten. Oh, my God. Did he just top deck the win? I think so. This has been incredible what stuff from Jim Davis. And he's going to kill the bank buster. Go to two. But Jim doesn't have to mind. Yeah. Plays a land in Chandra. That's going to do it. Wow. And Shota says, really? Oh. You got it. And Jeez. that's game number one going to Jim Davis. Even he has to shake his head there. That was a sweet game. He needed to chain together some <laughs> unlikely turns, and he managed to do it. Shota just could not quite get that extra so little bit close. of pressure. What a game. Yeah, that go for the throat off the Invoke Despair. So, so clutch for Jim Davis. Back to business for our two players here post-board. You can see 
that uh, Shota did have to mulligan down to six gyms on seven, but Shota has the advantage of being on the play. And for a deck like his, that's a big deal. It's good in any matchup, but uh, particularly in these curve out decks. Applying a lot of pressure. What does he have on two? Probably just has several two mana options. Yeah. He's deciding which one to play out. Transmogrant, maybe. Yeah, that's sure. what it is. He did have Denik as well. Yeah. He could have left up Make Disappear, but no, first yeah. two turns, you really got to right. get something going. Exactly. Make Disappear has uh, bigger targets. I think once you get to maybe around four mana, yeah. where opponents can play Shieldred, that's when you want to keep it up. Right. And, and, you know, this is ultimately an aggro deck of sorts. It is right. trying to apply pressure. And if you use your counter spells to keep status quo, but you don't have pressure, you will lose. If you use your counter spells to protect the threats that you have, you will... Uh, Win more often than not. Ooh, unblockable. Yep. Go to <laughs> 16 and 2 poison. Clean. <laughs> and just beating down. And there's that Denik as well, plus tap land pass turn back from Shota. But Jim's hand is fantastic. Four lands, double harvester, go for the throat, and a shieldred. That's the core. Yeah. So has the option of killing whatever he wants here. Go for the throat only has one target right now. You kind of want, it's weird because you kind of want to play the Trespasser just because it costs three and you have multiple twos and you can double spell next turn. Um, it does do a good job of blocking Denik, right? Yeah. So it's something to consider. Two cards? Two cards. Two. You could use the Harvester to kill the Transmogrant, but with Denik in play, with Denik in play, the, um, the Trespasser won't actually be able to exile anything. All right. Jim's going to use a Harvester to take out Skrelv and then just replace. But Shoto needs to find, doesn't have black mana either here, and no play. Kind of awkward. And that Igonjo Castle also very awkward. <laughs> really awkward. So he's going to do what he came here to do. Yeah, Jim's, Jim's, looking, Jim's looking really good here. Shota does not have an answer for that Shieldred that, that Jim has in hand. Jim's going to accept trade conditions. I wonder if Shota's just going to fire off this Igonjo mm -hmm. just to maintain a reasonable board. Very awkward here for Shota. Yeah. Even if he does decide to do this, he's doing this post block, so he won't be getting the damage through. Denix right. does uh, slip through. 14, but you're at 22. Cool. Yeah. When you see something like Shota make a play like that, two cards, right? two it's usually, I wouldn't call it like pure desperation, but you can tell that he recognizes that this is not going to go well yeah. if I'm, he can't keep a clock. I wonder going. if you just slam Shieldred here at this point, just because Shota doesn't have black mana in play. Yeah. Right? Right. And he can't counter, like, no make disappear right, no available. no make disappear, so it's like Odawara or bust. But if he had an Odawara, he probably would have played it, right? Because right? he missed the land drop. So I think Jim's sniffing it all out. It's like, you got nothing here, probably. Yeah, that was nice by Jim. This didn't work out for him last round, but uh, <laughs> I think it will this time. There's Skrelf go. Oh. And that's probably the death yeah. knell for Shota. Yeah. Like, it is really hard to come Shildred back from this. just goes unanswered. I mean, just staying on the board, doing nothing, it'll take over the game. Exactly. Jim now is incentivized to maintain status quo, but he's going to do more than that. He's got five Absolutely. cards in his hand, two lands, three spells. And he's got some nice stuff, too. Yeah. Hand is absolutely loaded here. Many options can go for the throat, the Denik, and then play the Trespasser to exile it because the Skrull does have summoning sickness. First things first, though. Let's get that clock at yeah. full speed here. Attacks for four down to 16 goes Shota. Looking to rumble. Is, he, is, is Jim just going to play a Trespasser with nothing? I think he's just going to kill Denik here. Yeah. Denik, exactly Denik into Trespasser do. makes a lot of sense here. This yep. is also the most proactive play that Jim can make at this juncture, yeah. and he's trying to jump 
on this game while Shota is uh, behind and not, doesn't have access to all of his men. And that was a big head shake there. Double and you black. can see why. It's double, a double black. black spell with Shielder. The Apocalypse, literally the worst draw for him. Not a land drop. Double yeah. black spell on single, and he Gain just has two. to say You just go. can't race a Shieldred. No, it doesn't it's work just... like that. Oh. He also can't block it, so. Right. <laughs> So now, Jim, Jim does have a Chandra here, which could just close out the game, game very quickly, but he does have to be mindful of potential counter spells. Sure. That Shota might have, so might choose to just run out of Harvester here it. instead. Yeah. By the way, even ready. channeling, even channeling the Sokinzan mm -hmm. on blocks is, is pretty devastating here, right? Mm -hmm. Make two one ones, block both. Oh, yeah. Right? There's a legendary creature in play. Sure. I don't think Jim's going to play this land that he has in hand. Funny. He passed. Yeah. When he activated the thing on the thing, it gives poison. Yeah. So uh, you lose life. On <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jim, he's like, look, we're 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 good. <laughs> and then he's like, but right when you said that is when he's trying his card. And Jim said, yeah. you lose some life. How about that? So there's Denek out of the graveyard. Transmogrant's gonna ship, offer a trade. And now the coast is clear for Chandra, right? Yes. And there's that Sokenzin that you mentioned. One of them's going to jump in front. That will trigger a clue, at least. Right. Now, Jim doesn't have land number six. Three bloods. And as you mentioned, he can also just kind of sit here. Yeah. Like, that Children's Shieldred's in been play. in here for That's three it. turns. That's all like, you really need. He can't do anything. Oh. Black Cleave Cliffs. Not the best Ooh. land. Close. I wonder if we're potentially going to use the Harvester here to just get Skrelv off the battlefield. Maybe cycle through some blood here to find an instant speed removal spell. That would be game. Right? Gaining, find a way for, yeah. to get Denik off the board and it's GG. Gaining two every time. Breach the Multiverse <laughs> is the card. <laughs> Doesn't win you right now, yeah, but yeah. like you're looking pretty good. Is this going to force a chump Denik on the uh, Shieldred? Three. No, uh, probably just go to the Harvester. Five. Go to three and then go to one. Yeah. And you can't even play go for the throat. You have a Caves of Koilos in play. Right? That's brutal. So I think, I think this, this is, is going to be do it. it. And yep. that's Jim Davis securing yet another victory here. What a run for Jim. You know, one of the most surprising things to me that we heard uh, from Jim in his interview with Cedric, as he said, that was against, I think it was against Luis, that was my first Pro Tour live feature match. Really? Yeah. I couldn't believe it either. Right. I mean, but he, he really like he played SCG, crushed those. He's been on camera a million times there. But when he really got great at this level was during right. the arena era. Now, now exactly. Last year he made an incredible run, got some feature matches there. But that's well, that was of course in our arena set championships, right? That's right. And now he's getting featured here. And remember, the last time he made a deep run, he did not lose a match to secure a spot into the top eight. On pace again. And, and his feature match has been Luis and Shota, and he's like, yep, <laughs> yep. out of the way, boys. Not a problem. Jim's in town. <laughs> All right, let's send it over to the news desk for Maria to set up our next match. Hey, everybody. Coming up next, we have Pedro Schiavetto versus Ricardo Biava. Pedro is on Esper Legends, the third most popular deck in the room, gaining some new tools in the form of Rona to go along with a terrifying curve, Skrelv Defector Might into Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, followed by a powerful three drop, is very difficult to overcome. On the other side, Ricardo is on Jeskai Control, one of the more rogue 
decks of this field. This is a true control deck. You do see counter spells and board wipes going alongside removal spells and a few win conditions in the Wandering Emperor and Sanctuary Warden. This is a deck that doesn't want to play against Mono Red Aggro. Everything else is fair game. S for Legends versus Just Guy Control coming up after the break. And welcome back to coverage here of Pro Tour March of the Machine. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe with Paul Chiang. We're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's beautiful here. Magicon happening. Got a free play area here out in front of us where people can come and play whatever they can draft. They can play Commander, whatever suits your fancy. A big game nights thing going on a yeah. little earlier over on the other side. A lot going on here in Minneapolis, but for now, we're focused in on the feature match area where we're gonna be joining our next match in game number two. You see Pedro Schiavetto on the left there versus Ricardo Biava, and uh, kind of a cool matchup here, Paul. Um, we, we are not seeing any Rakdos this round. It's um, Legends versus Jeskai Control. Yeah. Uh very, very different here. Even Jeskai Control, though, recognizing the power of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, it's kind of odd to see, for example, hey, I'm going to play a card that makes three mana 2 2, and then I'm also going to play Sweepers. But guess what? This card is just that good, still going to put it into my deck. Thank you. Pedro's up a game as we join. Pedro's the one on Esper Legends, by the way. And I like a good curve out creature deck versus a control matchup any day. Classic. There's classic. Skrull. Skrull from Pedro. Will it survive the turn? Yes, it will. It Reckoner Bank like Buster it now from, Pedro, from Ricardo, excuse me. Imagine, generally speaking, the matchup kind of tends to swing more to the, um, I want to say, the Esper Legends deck. Your main deck removal spells likely get replaced by counter magic, right? Because traditionally, Jeskai control decks are going to be looking to stabilize on the backs of uh, sweepers, right? Mm. Cards like Farewell, uh, Sunfall, stuff like that. We're going to see the ideal one-two punch here. Pedro, Scott Skrelv and Dorona. That's right. what, you know, it cast any spell on one and two in this deck and you're usually happy. The perfect cherry on top would be, do it for me, Pedro. Rafine. me. No, or, it is not Rafine. Also good here, though. Yeah, Lauren of the Third Path. Yeah, kill a Bankbuster, untap Yorona. 
That's really nice. You still get to untap your Rona. So loot or bash? I am team loot. Mm. But I also don't know what Pedro has in hand, so. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just live in the, the loot world. Was that a, an, oh. a, a no attacks from either? Right, okay, even, even Skrelv's gonna stay back All right, on so defense. So Pedro looking to try, try to play a little more of a late game strategy here. Sculpt the perfect hand. Pick your spots. This Boy, one. that Rona's doing some serious work. Yeah, absolutely. And even more. The Esper Legend deck was, was already a great deck, kind of coming into March of the Machine, and then just got an extra, extra toy here in the Rona. Can't quite see what was discarded there. Ricardo just sitting back comfortably with rank... Reckoner Bankbuster for lands. Interesting. So plays a land here first. Is it Rafine time? Taking one, so probably Rafine. Yes. Okay. That is Rafine. Resolves here. So Ooh, now, Ricardo says you got it. Yeah, and now I imagine we're going to see an attack here from the Rona. Still going to see that Squirrel stay back to protect the Rafine. Now you can do both, Marshall. You can bash and loot. I'm interested. The best of both worlds, huh? Let's try to think about sweepers, Paul. Thank you. Let's say it's a control deck. What do we got? Sunfall, two Sunfall in the main? We got two Sunfall and two Farewell in the main. Four copies of Lithomantic Barrage. Jeez. This is a post-board game, I'll remind you as well. We're in game number two with Pedro up a game. Now remember, though, Ricardo does need to first kill the Skrelv and just go in for the Sunfall. And I don't Hello. know if there's a Spell Pierce in Pedro's list. It would be fantastic here, but I don't think he has one. Now Pedro has two negate in the Ooh, board. Ooh, and that is brutal. But no spell pierce, and there's the sweeper that we were thinking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. And an incubate, I imagine. Yeah, well, for what, four? Three, I believe. Three? Goodness sakes. All right, okay. well, AO the Dawn Sky is a nice rebuild option here for Pedro. Right, and um, is there a way for Ricardo to find a way to exile this AO to prevent it from getting some value? Pedro had a few turns with uh, with Rona. Yeah. So you would think that there would be a nice options at this point, and it seems that there are. Yeah. Flame Blessed Bolt is an exile effect, but of course not quite enough damage to get the AO. You could also just cast Farewell. All Good right, idea. Well, there you go. I like your idea. Don't think we're going to be naming artifacts, but I imagine we are, we're going to exile... The AO, I wonder if the graveyard will also be exiled. Nope. So just creatures, but you said, is there a way to exile the AO to prevent the rebuild effect of killing okay. it? And there was. And yeah. as we imagined here, the hand is pretty stacked for Pedro, so the haymakers keep coming out. They're shielded now. There's no upkeep effect, so going to take some damage here. But if Ricardo has some kind of a removal spell, he's going to want to cast it now before Pedro untaps and has access to Plaza and counter spells. Right. Oh, doesn't have it this okay. time. So sweeper, sweeper, nothing. Right. Triggers start going now for Shielder the Apocalypse. Now, Wandering Emperor would not get it done with that Plaza in play. So has got to feel relatively safe here. Is that Wandering Emperor? That does look to be the Wandering Emperor. Sure. Ricardo deciding what to do with it. Could make a token, potentially? Du double block? 
Okay. Activate. Aye, aye. So now you can give it first strike. What is going on? No, that's not going to do it. But you can you All can right. trigger the bank. You can activate the bank buster and give that first strike. Okay. Right. It would eat. Yeah. Good sequencing here Shieldred. from Ricardo. Plus one, plus one. And now that kind of yeah, really, really great sequencing here from Ricardo. Because now Pedro's thinking, well, I can give it hexproof now. I'll eat your bank buster, but then Ricardo gets to untap and activate the Wandering Emperor to still get that Shieldred really nice off the battlefield. Ricardo here covered the bases. Oh, killing the bank buster, but this a Wandering Emperor will still be active on Ricardo's turn. Yeah, this is just going to be a very large trading of resources. It looks like, but when you're in Ricardo's seat, that that's the name of the game. Yeah, you're fine with a bunch of one for ones effectively. Shieldred trigger, maybe? No? Did it get missed? Might be. Okay. Can attack for three now as well. I mean, and, and sure. Now, yeah, Ricardo Lithamid. stabilized the air. Yeah. Everything's now cleared out of the way. Yeah. I don't know how many cards are in Pedro's hand, but like. There's a lot of really good draws. Right. The threats out of Esper Legends are, in many cases, the best ones possible for their mana slot in the format. Shieldred, number two? Yeah, there it is. Yep. And there a Skrelv to back Skrelv, it up. Skrelv, sure. Jeez, Pedro does not go away easily. Like, no. That was sweeper, sweeper. Big exchange, right. and still look at the board state. Right. Now, remember, this barrage will not be able to kill Shieldred. Only deals the five damage to blue or white creatures. Right. Can still use it to kill Skrelv. Probably want to kill Skrelv because... Oh, that's... Are they going to rewind? That was... That, that, that's a late one, that's I'm going to say. That's a late one, Pedro. But it looks like Ricardo's saying that's fine. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> you don't want to miss a key one. Absolutely. You know, the, they all matter. These games can be really, really close. One card? I think you still need to fire off this barrage here. You can't. You don't want the shield to just eat the Wandering Emperor, right? Make it unblockable. Right. And just a pain going forward. Yeah, absolutely. So now this is a 4-4, four, four, but I don't know if it's going to be attacking here. Nope. No, it's going to yeah. pass the turn. So now I think Ricardo's just look If Pedro attacks, could be potentially looking to chump block and then use the minus on the Wandering Emperor. Now, if Pedro doesn't do anything, he still has access to the plaza to give it hexproof. So some back and forth here. Okay, there's the attack though from Shieldred. Yeah, and I, is, is Ricardo just gonna have to throw away this Phyrexian token? I imagine, I imagine you have to. Yep, he's just yeah. gonna jump in front. Now not, does not, he have a, some be. kind of instant speed removal spell here that would help? Nope. There's a trigger. There's the trigger. So this, now we're going to see the plaza. Again, resources being traded. Yep. And we don't see any upkeep play here from Does that cost Ricardo. four mana to use? I thought what's, it was three. No? What's that? Plaza of Heroes. Is it not three tap? It's three tap. Yeah. Oh, Pedro tapped all of his lands? Yeah. yeah. 21. No? 19 plus two, right? Mm, looks like a life total discrepancy, yeah. but uh, they seem to have sorted it out. So where does the dust settle after all of these transactions? That's the question. Right. I mean, if Ricardo doesn't have anything, you can attack the Shieldred into the Wandering Emperor, and then it's it's Shieldred versus nothing, maybe? Yeah, you got to right? like that if you're Pedro. And we see three mana. Oh, it's Ooh. Adeline. Okay. 
but that's going to get disappeared. Right. And again, like look at all of the, you know, attack. the plaza being gone means yeah. that the make disappear can happen. Okay. But now this happens. That's so, out, so is there an answer for the shield in the next turn or two? Yeah, I feel like if Ricardo had a sweeper, he would have cast it there and then took up the Wandering Emperor. Agreed. So Ricardo does need to find. Ooh, he found something. What Sanctuary did he find? Warden. Oh, Sanctuary Warden. You're still around. Good for you. Yeah. Draw a card. Make a 1-1. One, one. This is an ETB or attack trigger, but there are two counters that it starts with. So let's let's start off with one right now and see where, where it takes yeah. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But this, uh, this <laughs> just the, the ability on Shielded itself has just done so much work. It really right? has. There's a card drawn and another land. Control deck with a lot of mana. Okay, it looks like they could not find a citizen creature token oh, here. Oh yeah, green yeah. and green and white citizen, right? Can't find it. So Pedro. now Pedro can't attack unless yeah. he finds an answer to the sanctuary warden, which is kind of difficult to remove with the shield counter on it. Very. Difficult to attack into. Difficult to attack. Now, the good news for Pedro is that not attacking doesn't mean that there's not forward motion. But yeah. This is a little slower. Nine right. life, like control right. deck can find a card draw right. spell into a removal spell, and it can all kind of fall apart. Yes, Drain you. Now Ricardo's down to seven. Attack you, remove, go down to five. Yeah, Ricardo just needs to keep digging until he can find an answer for right. this pesky Shieldred. It's And could try to race here. Yeah, it's always in the, like, you remove it. Racing a Shieldred. Yeah. Okay, I can answer the draw here. Hey, they found a citizen. Yeah. Can we ask him? Yeah, it looks like there's a question on the timing of this trigger here. So what's happening here is Sanctuary Warden's attacking. And a counter is going to get removed, which then allows you to draw a card and make a 1-1. One, one. I believe Pedro is wondering whether or not he can respond to Sanctuary Warden. Is there a window for him to kill Sanctuary Warden before Ricardo draws a card? The answer is no. It all happens at the exact same time. If you decide to do it, you're removing right. the counter, you're the getting card the card. gets drawn. Then the trigger, the card draw trigger goes on the stack with the Shieldred in play, but he, uh, Ricardo will have found that card. Attack, gotcha. you remove the counter from the creature. If you draw a card and create... So what is the, the question again? If I remove the counter... Yes. He can respond? Yes. Between create yes. and draw. Yes. So removing the... There's a trigger okay. that asks you if you would like to remove the counter. Okay. You choose to remove the counter. Yeah. When you do, you create a trigger okay. for draw card and create token. Okay, so I remove. I choose to remove the counter. Now he can, he can respond. Correct. Sure. Yep. You can respond. Oh, he can respond. I was between. wrong. I was wrong. I did I not get the wording <laughs> right on that. Would Let also not have guessed again. that. And this is of course important because the counter that he removes is a shield counter. Okay. Okay. Now he's going to get his card. He's going to get his counter, his token. Excuse me, but is that the really shields what were down so as you it may were. remove a counter if you do. If you do, it's a delayed trigger. I see. Okay. So he found a window to get rid of the big sure. flying angel. Has Ricardo seriously not found anything? Like, he drew two extra cards in the last two turns. <laughs> Is this Thalia just... Well, yeah. now the Thalia can... Uh, excuse me. The Shieldra can just attack. Yeah, and, and Ricardo's forced to start chump blocking. Is Pedro not even attacking here, playing around Emperor? Well, there's a barrage. Right? Pedro didn't even attack. He's, that was end step. You're right. He's not attacking. Right. He's just going for the drain you out strategy. And Shieldra just might get it done. Just in play. Just sitting there as an <laughs> enchantment. <laughs> Every turn, take two. I mean, Pater just doesn't want to Ricardo tap Ricardo can't rummage. Right. This is the last draw step, too, for Ricardo. Wow. And that is going to do it. Pedro figures out how to win that game. It, it didn't seem like he was going to be able to continue to play relevant board states after getting swept twice and facing a bunch of removal early. But that one last children with the distance. Yeah. I mean, it was just on the board for four or five turns. And uh, pay, uh, they, they were just unable to find enough ways to kind of get ahead on cards.
right? I mean, it was just, hey, I'm going to have some removal spells. I'm going to kill this thing. I'm going to kill this thing. But, I mean, Pedro just kind of hung in there. And guess what? A shield who didn't play can just win games by itself. We've seen it many, many times already. Yeah, it's funny and because we always think, like, well, that's why you play it, right? Like, they have to kill it right. or you win the game. It just feels like they always kill it. Right. <laughs> it's like, wait, he actually just did it and, and it stayed? And, and that it's was interesting it? because sometimes in these control matchups, that's where maybe Shieldred might not be at its best, right? right? Because it's a four-mana card that you tap out for it to play, but, I mean, it still got the jump done here, so. It, it surely did. So, Pater picks up the win there. That leaves us with one more match of this round. We've got Nico Boni versus Javier Dominguez, and this is Rectos mid-range in the hands of Javier, but domain control from Nico. We got a chance to see him at the tail end of last round as well for people that were watching. Really cool deck leaning on the Triumphs to help uh, set up a huge domain advantage for certain cards. So let's see uh, what these two Europeans have brought to the table for us. We've got game number three between them. I don't like to draw like yeah. I don't like to, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And both yeah, players here, yeah. veterans of the Pro Tour. Yeah, they started within a year of each other, which was 2000 and 2001. So well over 20 years of experience between these two. Yeah. Javier Dominguez, extremely accomplished player. 2018 world champion. But Nico Boni, also world champion, team world champion. Team world champion. He can hang with anybody, yeah. There's a duress. That's going to follow up the Blood Tithe Harvester, and Nico has to make a decision here. I think I see a Make Disappear and a Negate. Does he want to just fire that off just to hide what he can do? Usually yeah. you do, right, yeah. most of the time. Is this another Duress? No. Okay. He discarded Light up the Knight cycle. to the Blood Token. That tells me Javier might be light on Lance. Right. That did, <laughs> needed that, that did land. seem to be the case, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, because he played that thing so fast. Yeah, also, I, you know, he may have played the second land pre-duress just to, to play around Make Disappear. Right, yeah, absolutely. Had he had it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, it looks like he's okay. found it. Plus, Sulfur Springs after that. All right, and this is getting disappeared. Okay, so both players curving nicely. You can see some of the power of Blood Tithe Harvester providing a little bit of value to Javier Dominguez, but also that thing is cracking. Look at that, 14 yeah. life for Nico. It's probably going to get in again here down to 11. And this Rakdos mid-range deck has a lot of reach. Mm. If you can get your opponent kind of down to that 6 to 8 range, all their spells kind of at the top end of the curve can just get it done. Ooh. That's herd migration now for Nico. That life gain not irrelevant here. That's right. But... Fable of the Mirror Breaker is on the battlefield now for Dominguez. Question is, does Nico keep some sweepers in for this matchup? He better hope so. He's going to fall behind pretty quickly if not. You know, if he's got a bunch of counter spells in his hand right now, like, right. he's going to get ran over. You can still kind of, oh, what? So this that is, is a new card. Trample. We got a Thrun Breaker oh, of Silence. Thrun Breaker of Silence? That is awesome. So you, it cannot be targeted okay. in this matchup at all. At all, unless you have a, an Edict type effect. Yes, which, uh, yeah. Invoke Despair does get it done, though, right? It does. So if, she, if Javier can just find that and just cast it, that would be a disaster for right. Nico. You, you can be, it's only this guy, right? Like, you can invoke this guy. Like, if he can invoke you, right? You can invoke. As you can see, even Javier, not super familiar. It's been a while since... Uh, yeah, Thronebreaker of Silence does not see a lot of play. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a cool one here, though. Down to 11, but Javier okay. Dominguez is, is it fine just time sending now? it in. It might be invoke time. You see five mana here. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, that's so brutal for yeah. Nico. Th that makes me question why the card is in. Yeah, in you know this what particular I mean? matchup. Yeah, because yeah. It, it if you're going to play that type of card, it should just be oh. untouchable. Wow, Jeez, and a Javier. Just, Jeez, Javier. So that's Chill the track set, but he's at seven here. He's way off from being able to cast it. Yeah, needs to find a relevant threat here. Oh, he found the Wandering Emperor, didn't he? he? That is a nice one. That's going to kill the Blood Tithe Harvester, put Nico up to nine, and then we might see an Atraxa. Does he just do it now? No, he's going to pass. Oops. Yeah, sure. I mean, the Harvester's obviously coming. He duressed anyway. him. 
right? Yeah, he doesn't so he know about can't it. Can't arrest the top of the deck. Yeah. There it is. He's oh, going to make a samurai okay. trade just to keep his loyalty a sure. little higher. Or keep her loyalty a little higher in yeah. this case. This is a decent draw. <laughs> decent draw, yeah. <laughs> Nico agrees. Javier, don't do our job for us. <laughs> wow, that wasn't too bad either. Those Javier are decent to draws, too. Goodness. How does Nico resist not saying that's a decent draw, too, Chief? <laughs> but that's land number seven. Did the shield? Did we not get a shield trigger there? I didn't see one. Oh, man. They're going very quickly, though. And there's a Trax on the battlefield. Oh, that's that's a rough one, though. That shield trigger? That's, I mean, Nico's at five. Yeah. I didn't see it. They may have done it preemptively. I, it's, it's possible. They're going so quickly, but. Now that Atraxa, it does have lifelink, and Javier can make a harvester. That puts a second blood token into play. That's not quite enough. Not quite enough. Right? No. That's minus six, minus six. No, no, excuse me. That is enough. You just sack both the harvesters. That's minus four, minus four, and minus oh. four, minus four. Yeah, but he is at five. So you copy the harvester. You certainly have to get a Traxa off the battlefield. Then you can attack for five, for four, excuse me, which will eat a knight. Yeah, five tags. Yeah, Chat says, by the way, that they did say trigger. So oh, got it, got I it. I think okay. they're just playing really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To think a little bit about this. Javier said I need to have a little thinky think here. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of it will, of course, we don't exactly know what he's working with in hand, but given just us processing what's on the board. Right. Right. And we've seen even fast players like Javier Dominguez here pause and really say, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is the crucial turn, right? right? You're so close, and Nico is very close to stabilizing here off the cards provided by the Atraxa and just its body, right? Right. 7-7 seven, seven flying, vigilance, death touch, lifelink. <coughs> Looks like another Shieldred. Now, oh. Sacking the blood. Okay, that's a so now that's a fork cannot, in the road moment there. Right. So now we cannot kill the Atraxa. But is there a forced block? Okay. So now we have that. You can oh you can kill the knight and force a block. Right by attacking with the shieldred. Right. Yes. So that that causes a trade. But he's still digging. Huh. Oh, what? there's a call for the throat from Dominguez. Oh, you can do that. And that's enough to pick up the win. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, All right. That's one way to do that, it. That, that gets it done. <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? <laughs> All that hard thinking, Javier, and you just had to crack another blood token. And just, just keep cycling and you get there. Wow. What a win. Yeah, that that's a nice one. Extremely close, and he needed every card that he had access to to right. pick up that victory for Javier. But he did find it in one. Yeah, and and that's how, sometimes how this matchup's going to play, where you do have to still respect that draw of turn two blood tithe harvester into fable, because if you're on the back foot and you're still leaning on that attraction, if they find the answer, might not be enough. That's right. Wow. Lot of action here from the feature. We've still got another round to bring you. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, though, we'll be back at the news desk with Maria and friends. Don't go anywhere.